Okay, so let's just continue our discussion, right? So by the way, so yes, we do have pop-up quiz today. So I will give you maybe like 10 minutes towards the end. So I'll give you the code. Okay, just um, hang on there. So I'm gonna give you a code later, right? So what have we have learned? We have just learned the multiplier. Right? So what is a multiplier? So essentially it's one over one minus MPC. So this is a mechanical that just tells you the multiplier. And this, this mechanic tells you if we have $1 increase in spending in the economy, and then you're gonna see a chain rule happening. And toward the end, the total increase in spending is gonna to equal to one over one minus MPC. And certainly this is greater than one. And why this is greater than one? Is because MPC is positive, right? So that's what we just learned. Okay, now we can look at this case to understand the uh, the multiplier in work, right? So what do we have here? So let's just look at employment change in a time period from 2006 to 2010. And what happened in 2006, between 2006 and 2010? So there's a housing bust. So essentially, there's a collapse in the housing market. And first, if we look at construction sector versus non-construction sector, and clearly, so the employment in construction sector is gonna decline more significant in non-construction sector, simply because the demand over house is going to collapse. Right, but now if we look further into the data, if we separate sand state versus non sand state, what is sand state? Sand state here is include Florida, Arizona, California, and then Nevada. Okay, so they call it sand state not because they have beach, they have warm water, warm weather. Or is it because, largely because, so those are the housing market booming region. Now, if we have housing bust, and then so in those regions, they are going to hard hit than the other part. You may say, oh, so this should only affect construction. But actually, not only in construction, also in non-construction. Why is that? Is because this is exactly the multiplier, right? So we start with sand states. So they have collapse in housing market, and then so there is a high unemployment in the construction sector. But those people who lost their job, they are going to cut the spending in non-construction sector, and this domino effect is going to keep moving. So that's why I explained not only construction sector, sand state hard is hit harder. Also, this is going, they are going to also hit harder in non-construction sector. This is exactly because of this multiplier effect. All right. Now we are ready to look at consumer spending or as I wrote at the beginning, so we are going to look at C as a function of Y. Right? Here C is aggregate consumption. Y is aggregate income. Just remind yourself, we have three different ways to look at GDP. Right? So we can look at GDP through product. We can look at GDP through income. We can also look at GDP through expenditure. Okay. All right. So now in this part, I'm going to explain to you how consumer spending is going to vary with the level of consumer income. Okay. To summarize here, right? So households uh, consumption choice will depend in will depend mostly on their income. 
that just reflects this equation. Oh, sorry, this this term. So first of all, if we look at the actual data, let's take 2013. And if we plot, or if we look at data in two aspects, one, we look at current disposable income. And then we also look at consumer spending. So essentially, we just survey different households. Ask yourself, what is your, what is your disposable income? How much you spent in the last year? All right, and there's a, we may have a point here, or a point here, or a point here. Because right, you ask different households across region with different background. Okay. So then you are going to see different dot points. But interestingly, what we find out is, so you you survey different households and put their answers on this diagram. And then so you're going to see, we can connect the dot. And so this dot can be approximated by a almost a perfect straight line. And this perfect straight line is going to be called consumption function, as I'm going to show you later. Right? But for 2013 data, what we found out is that the average household disposable income is this amount. And every household consumer spending is slightly less than disposable income, right? And this difference will be explained by MPC, okay? Nobody is going to spend the entire disposable income, right? Pretty much everyone will save some. Now this is the consumption function. So the consumption function essentially is a function that approximate the relationship between households disposable income and households consumer spending. Or in other words, this is a, this is a relationship, mathematical relationship to approximate the point we have seen. All right. Now let's see how a typical consumption function look like. Okay, so this consumption function has C on the left hand side. Sometimes we call it dependent variable. Okay. On the right hand side, we have the following items. YD is household's disposable income. Okay. And the MPC is what we just discussed before the short break, like marginal propensity to consume. Now, what is A? A is a constant. And we call this A autonomous consumer spending. This defines as what a family would spend, even they have zero income. You may be wondering what are they going to spend if they have zero income and how they're going to spend. The answer is, so this A is going to refer to the minimum consumption you need to survive, including the basic shelter, clothing, food, water, utility. Okay? If you have zero income, how you can afford to pay for those spending. So either borrow or you receive help from the government or charity. All right, so that is the consumption function. So essentially show us the relationship between households consumer spending and the households income. Just keep in mind, so we have three ways to look at GDP. Okay. So one way is look at income. So in that sense, this disposable income is approximate for GDP, right? And the reason why I said approximate 
is because here, so this equal to only, on, this is only true if there's no government or if there's no tax or transfer, right? So this is consumption mansion. Okay. So now we can look at a few algebra, okay, to, to better understand this equation. So coming from the first part, MPC equal to changes in consumer spending divided by changes in disposable income. So if we multiply both sides by changes in disposable income, now we have this equation. Right? In other words, so if disposable income goes up by $1, the consumer spending will go up by MPC dollar, right? So now we can look at this practice question to better understand the consumption function we just discussed. Suppose when Sue's disposable income is 10,000. So this YD, she spent 8,000. Is C. Now, when her disposable income is twenty thousand, she spent fourteen thousand. Okay. Now, this question asks, what is her autonomous consumer spending, and then what is her MPS? Okay. Start with MPS. So MPS equal to one minus MPC. Now, what's MPC? MPC equal to change in consumption divided by change in disposable income. Now in this case, disposable income change from 10,000 to 20,000. Consumption change from 8,000 to 14,000. And then so we can easily find out the MPC equal to 0.6. Meaning, so MPA is equal to 0.4. Now, what is autonomous consumer spending? Okay, so we write down the equation we just discussed. C equal to A plus MPC times YD. Right? So we just plug in the information we have. So when your income is 10,000, you are going to spend 8,000, okay? A plus 0 0.6. Or when your income is 20,000, you are going to spend 14,000. Okay? So regardless which equation you use or which point, which data observation you use, we are going to find the same A. Largely because, so this consumption function is linear, is a straight line. Okay, either way, so you can easily find out, so you can use, use the first data observation and you can find that A equal to 2000. Or in other words, the correct answer is D, right? So this is a simple application to the consumption function we just discussed, right? Also, this example, I just explained to you how we calculate MPC, okay? So in general, so this is how the consumption function we'll look at. So this consumption function just show us the relationship of consumer spending as a, as a dependent variable, okay? So that's going to change with household's disposable income, right? So this is a straight line. And two things, number one, so the slope of this straight line is going to be given by MPC, right? So the slope is divided by what? Divided by the changes in 
y axis divided by changes in x axis or changes in vertical divided by changes in horizontal line. So you can see, so if you divide, divide delta C by delta Y D, you can clearly see the slope of this line equal to MPC, this number one. The other thing is, so there's an interception of this straight line toward this vertical line. So the, in this interception, what happens is your disposable income equal to zero. And then so by definition, so this interception gives you a autonomous consumer spending. Okay? So this is how we understand consumer function in a straight line. Okay. Now you may wondering how well do data fit with our theory? But what is our theory? So our theory just says C is going to be a linear function of disposable income. Now this is our theory or our conjecture. Now if we bring our theory to actual data, okay, and then we are going to see the good, the fitness of our theory. So in this diagram, so we have disposable income on horizontal line, consumer spending on vertical line. We ask different households, right? So each dot represent one household in our economy. So they may come from different states. They may have different occupation. They have different race, ethnicity, or different education level. So we plot those dots, and from this diagram, you can see, so this line, this straight line, almost perfectly match with the actual data. So that's a good indicator. So our theory is a good description of what happens in consumers' behavior. But this is an aggregate. Okay. All right. So now we are ready to look at aggregate consumption function. Right? So the difference is we just change everything from lowercase to uppercase. Right? So that's what we just discussed. Let's look at how each individual respond to their change in disposable income. Now we add everybody together. So we are gonna have this aggregate consumption function. This just tells us how the aggregate consumer spending will adjust with the observed aggregate disposable income. Right, so this is a simple summation. Now everything is going to be preserved, but particularly the slope and the interception. But this A is just aggregate. Okay, so just multiply A, this lowercase A, multiply it with or multiply it by the population. Right, so I'm going to I stop here with this practice question and then I'm going to give you the code for today's pop quiz. Right. Assume aggregate consumer spending equals 5,000 when aggregate disposable income is zero. When disposable income increases from 300 to 400, consumer spending increases by 70. What is the equation for aggregate consumption function? Now, C equal to A plus MPC times YD. That's aggregate consumption function. What we need to find is the value for A and the value for MPC. 
So the question states, when disposable income is zero, aggregate cons consumer spending is 5,000. That just means A equal to 5,000. Okay. The other piece of information we got is that consumer spending will increase by 70 when disposable, in disposable income increases by 100. Right from 300 to 400 is 100. That implies NPC of 0 0.7. Hence, the correct answer is C. Right. So for today's um, pop up quiz, is going to be. I mean, the code is going to be data. 